Hello, my name is Cameron, and today I will have the pleasure of teaching you about human rights. And we're going to start at the very beginning of human rights, back with a dude called Cyrus the Great. Cyrus the Great lived in 1625 and had this thing, and he was conquering places left and right. And when he conquered these places, he had all of these people that he needed to rule over. Now, he had recently seen the fall of one or two empires, and portions of these, such as the Ottoman Empire, when, pe when people revolted against them. Now, he had the bright idea that if he had treated his recently conquered people right, they'll be just fine with being conquered. And he was actually pretty close to being right on that one. So I made this thing called the, well, it's the Cyrus, ah, uh, Cypress Cylinder. Cyrus Cylinder. This was basically a code on how to treat people correctly. Now Cyrus, he was in the Persian Empire. He was the Persian Empire at that time. And through this, People wanted to be in his empire because it let them have protection from other empires at that time, such as the Ottoman Empire, which would be nowadays about the strength of Russia or America. So they really wanted protection, and they knew they'd be treated right and have the freedom of religion, the freedom not to be sold into slavery or sex trading, and the freedom to be treated as almost normal citizens with one, with one or two exceptions regarding he, males of fighting age. This stayed about the code until about 5th century BC, where, all, where in the Sophia school, a philosopher, all of these people agreed that all humans are nature, equal by nature. Now these are philosophers, which is which are scientists, which are scientists, psychologists, theists, atheists, and a whole bunch of other things, depending on which one you were. Now you have to you have to understand that Plato was highly respected, kind of like Einstein was in his time. And Aristotle was just his assistant. Now these people both agreed that slavery is is wrong, and so was women being treated poor poorly, even though that they were in a male dominant society. This is actually one of the reasons why the Greeks favored a more everyone is equal voting system. And also, they had the original idea that humans needed to communicate, that they were together for a reason. They were together because they liked the company of others, and in doing so, they were a social animal, pack animal, kind of like the wolf. And this laid the foundations for the documents such as the Magna Carta and the U.S. Constitution and many other constitutions around the world. This, this leads into the Magna Carta. Now, the Magna Carta is one of the documents that is revered throughout the human culture because it is the, one of the first documents, the first contracts, that tells an emperor how he has to rule over his subjects, saying that things along the lines of you can't just, you can't tell someone he's doing a crime without just proof. This laid the grounds for such documents as in the Justinian Empire, which came before, that also had some basis for the Magna Carta. Now, Justinian was the ruler of the Roman Empire, another Roman Empire. He descended from a farmer, and so believed that farmers should be treated equally, because he used to be one of them, and ascended to emperor status. 
this led to the establishment of the Justinian Code. Not a code necessarily in that time, but the man that ran this... Hold on, let me pull it, pull it up. Here we go. Sorry, I didn't have this tab open. I didn't think I'd go into in depth. Now, the Corpus Julian Civilius is a collection of over 700 books, legal books, that were all boiled down into 50 so that everyone knew their legal rights. And this was written by or compiled by, depending on who you ask, by, by his legal assistant out of the seven of them. Now, hold on, let me pull up. I don't want to give you false information here. He was the first Justinian. Four, four books, and each of these contain even more books. This led on to other books later, but these are the main ones. Tribonian. That was his name. Sorry, I forgot about that. Tribonian. Tribonian was a bit corrupt, but he was the first one to boil down over 700 books. I think the number is estimated around 600, I mean 734 books, into only 50. Now, this also had to do with the the basis for the legal code in almost every country, which was the basis for the Magna Carta. This was, this is one of the main passages that was used. No free man shall be taken in pri prison, deceased, outlawed, banished, or in any way destroyed. Other wa in other ways meaning you can't have blame put on someone just because he didn't do anything, and this had to be done by the judgment of people around him. This inspired the Constitution, American Constitution, and Fifth Amendment. That's what the Magna Carta looked like. That's the King's Seal on the bottom, and this was written in 1215. I don't know if that will be on your test or not, but that might be a day that you want to know. Now this led into such things as the legalization of gay marriage in quite a few countries, and this, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This is the version of what the Cypress Cylinder and the Code of Justinian try to accomplish. It is, it is, I'm not going to read it to you, although I am in Malio, and this is one of the documents I use a lot, because you can use it for so many things. This is basically saying, you can't avoid this. This is the... I'll just sum it up for you. All human... This is pretty self-explanatory. Everyone is equal and born free. They're not allowed to be born into prison and just kept in there for no reason. Or they should be treated differently or enslaved. This is also the basis for a couple other things. This is also, everyone has the ability to be in a equal society, that everyone should be equal, and every country should have the ability of to be independent, to be non-corrupt, and they shouldn't be able to be limited on every, on any sovereignty issues, which means that they get to do what they want, and no country should impose on that. This Article 3 is self-explanatory. And this is just anti-slavery, slavery, basically. No torture, illegalizing torture, or, or inhumane or degrading. Which means, basically, something that is just wrong and disgusting. Like, you wouldn't pulse someone by four horses like they did in Atla, Hun in Atla the Hun's times until their limbs fall off. That would be inhumane treatment. And everyone is equal before the law, six and seven. And then nine is basically what I was quoting in the Mag Magna Carta but summarized. Same with ten and eleven. 
everyone should be equal and the only thing that they should be held accountable in court is doing something wrong not because of race sex se or s sexual orientation etc and article 12 privacy 13 is they can do whatever they want leaving the country and the right to move around they're not allowed to be put in one spot and stay there article 14 is basically that they can go to another country if their country is prosecuting them. For example, if one country said, we're just going to kill all the people with uh, blue eyes, all the blue eyes would be granted asylum in different countries. And everyone can change their nationality and has a nationality. There cannot be a nationality list person unless they don't want to. And Article 16, freedom to marry, and to do so willingly. 17 is property, and 18 is freedom of thought, conscious, and religion. 19 is opinion and expression. And then the rest you can read if you want to. You don't have to, but it might come up sometime. I don't know. Well, thanks for lis listening and watching, and I will include this link below. Have a great day.